Good morning, folks. We're starting with the universe through Fermi's eyes, seeing how gravitational lensing works long range to split the receipt of gamma ray burst signatures from the most powerful blasts we can measure. I recommend the article that accompanies this full video linked for you below. Remember how much I was talking about Brazil last month? Every other day it was rain this, flooding that, and with good reason. It's the rainiest place on Earth already, with high monthly averages. The records they hold there were yet double to quadruple their huge average amounts. And in December, most of those records were doubled or more. Another chance for East Coast watchers to see a launch. Commercial launch Antares will blast off soon and be visible for millions of people, assuming clear conditions. This map is linked in the About tab, and a good accompanying article can be found on Universe Today. Last article... University of Utah delivering analysis of those landslide quakes we had not too long ago, as high as 5.1 on the scale. Recall from last week where tropical development potential swung to the other side of Australia. We indeed are watching a small but well-patterned cell up northeast of Vanuatu. This will be one to watch come south where tens of thousands have lost power on the east coast due to a separate major thunderstorm. Big low, cresting Europe. I do believe this one's going to be a bit lighter for most of the continent than the ones they've had, but local weather checks are needed. The big bad low right now is well north into Canada, but as powerful as they come, and we'll show you why in a moment. First, let's come to the temperature map at Intellicast and show you why there should be frost on the beaches of the Gulf of Mexico and misery everywhere north. For me in Columbus, it is yet below zero with wind chills around negative 20 or worse. It's come up from the surface winds through the cloud layers and into the jet stream. Remember that the top level stratosphere winds follow bigger loops at the poles, or do so normally. This is from December. Right now that vortex split with the southward break, you guessed it, right over the United States. From surface to outer space, Arctic air races south over the United States and such agreement all the way up through the air is preposterously rare. Let's come to the six hour solar wind can't see that slight variability on the 24-hour charts. Sensitive metrics picked it up no problem, but it is small, so no problem. Proton storm, however, is continuing. It's the result of a major CME event that occurred just behind the western limb. Plasma dance was fantastic and a bit helical, and on stereo A, looks like it was an X-class solar flare. Massive, but not heading this way. Still managed to juice Earth's poles with energy and radiation, though. Remember, we are expecting a CME impact any moment now, resulting from the M4 solar flare a few days ago. Should be a minor event, magnetic storms are possible, but any serious damage is very unlikely. An M1 this morning heralds the reawakening of the beast. We've waited for a bigger showing from the best spot we may see all year. The development north of it is now developing a delta of its own, and literally, I can go one, two, three, four deltas, and I was generous grouping a couple in there, could be six. And oh yeah, great job to everyone who caught this bundling, the central bipolarity vortex that may be appearing in the Big Umbra. Only seen that one other time since the magnetogram was released. My alarm went off during this video creation here as a near X-Flare decided to christen this morning news efforts. Thanks. For weeks we've looked forward to when Mercury and Venus geocentrically conjoin just after Jupiter and Earth conjoin heliocentrically. We're in the process got a proton storm and space weather on the way, and then this big coronal hole. Watch score elevated from A- to A, with a lone caveat that Stanford hasn't updated our newest and possibly best factor since November of 2013, so we're just forced to assume that this one factor is high. For all we know, the polarity is bland and the watch should only be in B range. But the other factors are present, and it's better to be safe than sorry, so eyes open. No fear, it's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.